We also put an end to the forced unionization of home health care workers and unionizing by university grad students. See, I told you we were doing some good stuff. We are. It's just you don't hear about the good things that we do. Um, but I, I have to, uh, I have to, I have to tell you tonight that we get a lot of phone calls from a lot of people in tea parties that are just steaming mad about some of the things that we're doing and why aren't you doing this fast enough? And I just want to give you a heads up that sometimes in the middle of a bill getting passed. Much changes get made to it. And some of the things you're calling about, those changes have already been made. And you're just not getting it on your computer. So I just want to let you know that before you come up steaming mad at me, emailing me nasty grams, uh, please consider the fact that we are working that bill <coughs> to where it's going to end up being a good bill. And it won't, won't be what it was introduced as. One of my gun bills that I introduced. Uh, we made serious changes to it. I'll talk to that in a minute. And somebody called us up and was talking about the, the original introduction of the bill, how much they disagreed with it. They were extremely mad. <laughs> then we had to spend some time, and we generally do spend some time and say, hey, this is the changes that we're making. So the only thing I'm saying is, I don't mind you calling, and I don't mind you getting upset. I just want to warn you that the process we, we go through um, sometimes ends up being exactly what you want it to be, too. And that was one of them. Uh, the one bill on uh, uh, put an end to the forced unionization of home care, care workers. I got some nasty things about that. First of all, blaming the leadership and blaming different senators and blaming the House of Representatives and just a little bit upset with that because we hadn't passed it yet. And what we were doing, we were waiting on some statistics so we could include those in the bill <laughs> so we could get the bill done right. So we don't have to worry about doing a bad bill. And that's really all that happened on that, that piece of legislation. So there's real achievements, real reforms that will result in better government, expand freedom, and increase transparency in government. I think that uh, for what we've done the first year and a half, I'm proud of what we've done. Now, I, I just got handed, thank you, I just got handed a piece of paper of about 30 things that that the Tea Party group wants done, and we haven't done one of them yet. And, and I understand some things are very difficult to change. And I've always said it's hard to turn a ship around on a quarter. Um, and even talking, and I wasn't going to talk about right to work, but even talking about right to work, there's some things that if we pass right to work right now, uh, it's going to work up the unions in our state and across the country we're concerned about. And they are putting a ballot, they're putting a ballot proposal on this year to eliminate the thought of ever anybody changing this state to a right to work state. And I support going to a right to work state. I don't think we're ready to do it yet. I just don't think now is the proper time to go that direction. I know some of you are chopping at the bits to get it done. Somebody over here said that all you had to pay was 70%. That's not true. 19% is all you would have had to pay under the Beck decision. Well, 19% is, if you decide you want to get out of your union, you can do it today. But you still have to pay 19% of your union dues. You lose all union rights. Is that right to work? Nobody has done that. Hardly no one anywhere has said, I don't want to belong anymore. I'll pay 19% and go my happy way. Nobody's done it. No businesses are clamoring for right to work. Um, and I find it's going to be very difficult, even if it was passed this year, to maintain it. So I say, let them put it on the, let them put it on the ballot. If we have so much support, that which we think there is, we'll defeat it, then we'll vote it in when it's done. If that ballot proposal is voted down, I, I promise you, when it comes up next time, I'll vote for it. support it in, a, in the position that we're in right now, not knowing how much effect it's going to have anyway. And you know what? It's going to cost a pile of money to defend that. Who's going to pay? Who's going to put the ads on TV about right to work? We, we have to have right to work. Uh, our businesses, is the state chamber going to do it? Uh, because I'll guarantee you, 
there would be ten million dollars spent on TV ads by the unions. And that fifty-four percent that we have supporting right to work right now will go off real fast when they start labeling us as whatever they're going to call us. They, they always do uh, Tea Party wackos or whatever it is. When they get done labeling us with ten million dollars worth of ads, we won't have fifty-four percent anymore. And so that's why I'm saying let's. Let's be careful. Let's not go too fast. I've always maintained Indiana's passed it, the first state in the nation to go to a right to work that was never a right to work before. Let's see what happens in Indiana. Will it make a difference? Will they be stealing our jobs? Some people say they will. Some say nothing will happen. So I suggest let's wait and see what happens, get through this fall, look at next year. Um, uh, if you want to talk about it later during questions and answers, I'd be glad to. That's really about all I can say on right to work. I appreciate the effort that you guys have, the fight that you have, but it's a bigger battle than this room right here. It's, it's a much bigger battle than we can do, and can we afford it?